Okay, today we're doing a repeat of the di density lab, so this should go pretty quickly for you guys. Um, this is all our information, all right, I've made it a little bit bolder. There is one thing I am going to do. You need to keep this here where the names are um, because you guys need to be able to um, know what's yours and what belongs to other people. But I'm just going to delete this column so that everything slides over and makes it a little smaller. All right, you guys are, are going to not do this. You're going to keep your names in there. All right, but good. Now, now we have all the stuff we can work with. Now, a couple of things we're going to do. Well, the first thing we want to do is we need to figure out the volume using the measurements that we took. Well, we have the length, which is good. That would te technically be the height of the cylinder. And we have the diameter. Now, with the diameter, you can fill out the area of the cross section. So if you take you know, the area of the cross section, multiply it by the height, that gives you the volume of a cylinder. But what we need to do here is like, OK, we need the diameter. We want to go do pi r squared to get figure out what the area is. So we need to multiply pi, which is 3.141, times half of this times half of that again. All right, so we're actually going to do a couple of steps to do this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a radius. So this is the radius. All right, and the radius equals this number, the diameter, divided by, you guessed it, 2. The radius is half the diameter. Boom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this all the way down. Boom. All right, and so this is the diameter. Now, one of the things you notice, most of these numbers are pretty good, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.9. That's a little strange. And when you think about it, it says, now, wait a minute. This is off by a factor of 10 between the other twos. What could it possibly have? How come this one's point, the diameter is 0 0.9, 0 0.196, and this one's 1.96? That's like 10 times thicker. Well, the answer is very simple. This person here forgot that they were doing it in millimeters and they needed to convert it to centimeters. So all we have to do, we need to do, move the decimal over one. Now, I could have fixed all this for you guys, but you know what? If you, you guys got to get a little bit more careful in taking your measurements, so I'm going to make you do it. Okay, so these guys are all the same. Now, you notice that suddenly this, the, uh, so these guys got a little smaller. That's because, remember, there were two different thicknesses of wires we dealt with. Okay, these are the thinner wires. Now, you notice here, this one went from 1.13 to 130. Clearly, this person left off the decimal. So I'm going to just put the decimal in there. And then the rest of these are, again, the same problem. They should have moved the decimal. 0 0.1, 0 0.1. These are all a tenth of a centimeter in thickness. Okay. All right. Same thing here. This is two tenths of a centimeter. All right. So now you look at these, and this is again 115. You know, you guys didn't pay attention to what I was saying, so we're gonna have. To, I'm gonna make it repeat it all. This one's 3.4. That one looks really, really strange. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. All right. But it certainly, it, maybe it could be 3, okay? And this guy also had 3.3, which seems a little thing. All right, so we're going to delete that. We're going to vote 3.33. All right, because it has to be, otherwise it would be off by like a magnitude, okay? Now, if you take a look at these guys, these numbers all look pretty much the same. These guys are all fairly close. And remember, I cut those individually so that they should vary by a little bit. This one here looks a little weird. That one here looks a little weird. That one here looks a little weird. All right. But, all right. Now, the only other thing you notice, you notice is a blank space here. This is actually, this, this was this kid here. Started filling it and then hit submit by accident. I'm just going to delete that. And so now we have all our data in one place. All right. So if you take a look, we now have the radius. And you notice that all the radiuses, uh, this one here is off by quite a bit. Oh, no, no, they're all pretty close. They're actually all not too bad. All right, so we got all these different radiuses. Now, what I want to do now is I want to do the area. Once I got the area, the area equals, once I got the radius, the area equals pi times r, times r, right? r squared is r times r. 
So all we have to do is we're going to write in pi. This equals 3.141 times, and of course you don't type in the numbers. All you have to do is select the cell, the radius, times the radius. Boom. And that equals the area in cubic millimeters. All right. And all I have to do is drag this down. And that's the area of a cross section of my cylinder, my, my wire. All right. So that's good. So now what do I have to do? Well, I figured out the radius. I figured out the area. Now if I want to figure out the volume, think about it. What are you doing? Well, the volume is area times length. All right, I'm going to actually increase the size of this font so you guys can see it a little better. It's not quite that good. Yeah, that a, there you go. That's a little bigger. And I'm going to wrap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these guys and, and I'm going to format the cells, alignment, and if you click wrap text, everything wraps nice and neat and fits. Okay, so the volume equals the area times the lift. So I'm going to type in equals the area, which is this, times the length, okay, or the height, depending on how you look at it. Boom. Now that's your volume. Okay, so the area, which is this, times the length, which is this, and that gives it. Oh, but there's one problem is now, this is something I did. I wasn't all the way at the top. Now I can fix this pretty easily. All I have to do, again, I want to dry, do a drag fill. I have to go to the lower left hand corner. I'm going to drag this up all the way. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now watch what happens as I fill in those area spaces. Again, I'm going to go to the lower left right hand corner, drag it all the way up, and there. Now everything goes all the way up to the top. Then I can just take this guy and drag it all the way down to the bottom. And that is the volume. All right. Now you guys know very, very clearly that these numbers are not all significant. All right, so what we're going to do now, now we have a volume, and we're going to calculate density of this material in two ways. Okay, first we're going to do density, okay, which is going to be mass divided by volume as measured. All right, now what that is, we're going to calculate the density based on the measurements that we took with the rulers. Okay, so let's figure that out. So that equals the mass, which over here is the weight in grams, divided by the volume that we calculated. Boom, and that gives us our density is 9.945. Now, remember, the volume is always going to be a little different because these things are different lengths. And some of them were different thicknesses. You notice that this, this guy is twice as thick as this. Okay, let's see what happens when we drag this down. Boom, you notice this? Notice how pretty most of these are? A few of you guys, no offense, you kind of blew it here. Okay, these are clearly wrong. But if you take a look at these up here, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 10, 8, 9, 9, 8, 8, 8. So the density isn't really, really too far off. All right? So actually, most of you guys did pretty good. And when you do your calculations, you're going to actually be talking about your own measurements. So that'll be pretty good. Now, let's figure out the density Okay, mass divided by volume, open parentheses, water displacement. Now remember in class we talked about this and we said, yeah, we kind of think that that water displacement method didn't look all that accurate. So let's see what the density looks like here. Equals. All right, the mass in grams, okay, divided by, backslash, divided by, and then the amount of water displaced in milliliters, which is cubic centimeters. So let's just click on that and hit enter. Okay, well, this guy had a density of 15 grams per cubic centimeter. Let's drag it all down and see what happens. You notice how big the differences are here? They're very, very dramatic differences from 15 all the way down to 2, all the way down to 0.16. Um, this, the reason this one didn't have a value, and this again, 
I, I'm asking people to do things, and I'm going to make you fix the problem because it do, you don't learn it if I keep on fixing the problem for you. Because this person put in the, the label, which, of course, you all know this is chemistry. You're supposed to use labels, but not when you're doing Excel. So I'm just going to delete this ML and hit Enter, and watch what happens to that value over there in the corner. Boom. All right, and then it goes away. Okay, now it actually calculates it. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to just we're going to save this, and we're going to then we're going to move on to part two of the lesson.